Hello Divination and welcome. In this two-part series, I'm going to show you how to recreate the color filters, effects and blend mode examples with Divi. So this is the final result that we are aiming for. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let me show you step by step how we managed to create this. Okay, so I'm in my WordPress admin dashboard. So the first thing I'm going to do is to start off by creating a brand new page. So I'm going to come over here to pages and click on add new. We're going to give this page a title. So I'm just going to call this filters part one, but you can name this page whatever you want. So I'm going to go ahead and click on use the Divi builder. And then I'm going to go into the visual builder. So I'm going to click use visual builder. So I'm going to start off by creating our background gradient colors. So I'm going to come over here to my section settings, click the gear icon. And then I'm going to come over here to my second tab, click the plus button to add our first color like that. And then I'm going to paste my value in here like that. Click the second color and paste the value in here like that. Next, I'm going to come over here to my gradient direction and set this to 160. Now, if you'd like to follow along step by step and use the same settings as we are in this tutorial, you can head over to the post, which I'll link to in the show notes below, which will have the exact settings that I'm using throughout this tutorial. Next, I'm going to add some padding to the top and the bottom of my section so that our design that's going to be in here will have enough breathing space around it. So I'm going to come over here to my design tab and then I'm going to come over here to padding top 130 and padding bottom 130. But you can increase this as you're designing depending on what effect you're looking for. So now that we're done with this, I'm going to go ahead and save. Now it's time to add our column structure. So I'm going to come over here, click this plus button, and I'm going to add this one right here at the bottom. So I'm going to select it. And then I'm going to click the plus button and add my text module like that. Right. So while I'm in my text mode, I'm going to add my text like that. And then we need to customize it. So I'm going to come over here to my design tab, make sure that my text orientation is set to centered. And then as you can see, we can't read this text on this background because it is quite dark. So I'm going to change this text color from dark to light. So now we can read it, but we still need to do some more customizations. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to my heading text, click on H2. So I'm going to change this from default font to Poppins. And then I'm going to change my size from my size from 26 to 56. So I want it nice and big. And then for my heading to line height, I'm going to change this to 1.3. Next, I'm going to come over here to my text, my normal text size, change this as well to Poppins. And then I'm going to change my text size to 16. Over here on my line height, I'm going to set this to 2EM. So now, we have some breathing space between these sentences so that it's much, much easier to read. Now it's time to add our animation. So I'm going to come over here to my design tab, click the last option on the bottom here. So we're going to choose slide. And then here on the intensity, we're going to set the intensity to about 20%. And then the animation or uh, starting opacity, we're going to bump this up to about 100%. Fantastic. So that's looking good. Go ahead and save. Now it's time to add our next row, but this time we're going to have three equal columns. And in these columns, we are going to be adding images. So for now, I'm just going to close this because we need to make some adjustments to our row settings. So I'm going to click the gear icon of the row settings, click on design, spacing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by adding our custom padding to column one and column three. So on the top, I'm going to add 3%. And then I'm going to do the same for the right, bottom and left. And then for column three padding, I'm going to add 5% to the top, right, bottom and left. So next I'm going to come over here to sizing and then I'm going to click on use gutter width and I'm going to set this to two. Now the reason why I'm setting my gutter width to two is because I want my images to be closer together when I start adding them. But you will see when I, as I add these images, because right now we won't be able to see it because there's nothing in there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and save and then I'm going to add my image. So first of all, I'm going to click my plus button here to add my image module. 
I'm gonna select image. And then over here on the URL, I'm gonna click upload. And this is the image that we need to use. I'm gonna click upload an image. So now it's time to add all our settings. So I'm gonna come over here to my design tab. So first of all, I'm gonna add my custom margin to the bottom. So I'm gonna come over here to spacing. And then I'm gonna add my custom margin like that. And then over here, I'm gonna add a minus six. Next, we are going to add some box shadow because we really want this to look as if it's on a background. So I'm gonna come over here to my box shadow and I'm going to select this one here, which is the second one. And for my horizontal position, I'm gonna set this to 16 pixels. And as soon as I've entered that, you can now see that there is a separation between the background and our image. And then over here on our box shadow blur strength, I'm gonna bump this up to 100%, I mean 100 pixels. So if you can't get it, just type it in. So next we are going to go on to our filters and this is where we get to add our saturation. So over here, I'm gonna add 64% like that. And then I'm gonna come over here to my opacity and we're gonna set this to 49. And then for the blur, I'm just gonna increase this to about four pixels. Next, we're going to add some animation to this. I'm gonna come over here. Uh, we're gonna make sure that this is a slide animation and we want this to slide up. So I'm gonna change the direction here from center to up like that. And then for the animation duration, I'm gonna set this to 1,250. And then over here on the intensity, we're gonna set this to 9%. And the starting opacity, we're gonna bump this up to about 100%. So now we can see that it's subtle and it looks really cool. Right, so I think we're done with this. Let's go ahead now and save this. So what I'm gonna do is, majority of these settings here are going to be used on my third image. So to make things easy for me, I'm just gonna go ahead and clone this and then drag this over to the right. Okay, next I'm gonna add my image for the middle one. So I'm gonna click this plus button, click on image, and then I'm gonna add my image module like that. And then for now I'm just gonna save. So as I was saying earlier on, this now in the middle, is now really prominent and these other two are right there in the background. So this helps uh, really make sure that the middle image is the one that's in focus. So, but we haven't uh, uh, finished yet. So I'm gonna go into um, uh, the settings of my third image. So I'm gonna go click the uh, gear icon and then I'm gonna come over here to design and make a few adjustments. So over here, I'm gonna come over here to the filters and Right, so with this the third uh, image, we want to give this illusion that that image is much, much further back. So to do that, we're gonna start off with the saturation. We're gonna change this from 64 to 48. And then I'm gonna go to the opacity and we're gonna reduce that to about 24. And then finally, for the blur, we're gonna change this to, we're gonna bump it up from four to about 10. Right, so now we can see that it, that is right behind there in a distance, which is exactly what we need to achieve. So next, I'm gonna come over here and save. Now, we are going to apply a color effect to this. So we're gonna come over here to our row settings and click on design. And then over here on the filters, I'm gonna change my blend mode to luminosity. So once I select this, now we can see that the colors have now changed and that is really looking cool. So now I'm gonna go ahead and save, and then I'm gonna move on to my next example. So to do that, I'm gonna click this plus button, add my regular section. I'm gonna close this for now. And then over here on my section, I'm gonna add my background. So I'm gonna come over here to section settings, click on background, and then I am going to click on my third tab click the plus button, and then I'm gonna add my mountains, click upload an image. So now we have an image in the background. Next, I'm going to uh, make sure that I use 
parallax so i'm going to activate that and leave it on true parallax now we don't want any spacing uh, around this image so we are going to get rid of the padding so to do that i'm going to come over here to design click on spacing and i'm going to add all zeros to my sides so i'm going to start off with the top right bottom and left okay so now i'm going to go ahead and save next i am going to add my column so i'm going to click this plus button i'm going to add a single column and for now i'm just going to close this so that i can customize my row settings first before i go into the image settings so i'm going to click this gear icon to access my row settings i'm going to come over here to background and i'm going to add my image so i'm going to go and click the third tab click my plus button and this is the image that we need to go with click upload an image and then here i'm going to go ahead and select use parallax but this time i'm going to choose css now the reason why i'm doing that is because we want a different effect as the visitor is scrolling on our page now we can see that our image here in this row is not filling the whole width so to fix that we're going to come over here to design and then i'm going to click on sizing and make this row full width and then over here where it says use custom width i'm going to change the unit to percentage and i'm going to drag this all the way to 100 so now this ensures that our image is now edge to edge next i'm going to come over here to spacing and add my custom padding so to the top i'm going to add 20 percent and 20 percent to the bottom now the reason why i'm doing this is because we want to see more of this image now as you can see my monitor is is um, very large so i would need to increase this percentage to see more of that image so i'm going to try 30 and see how that looks and this is looking much better but you can adjust this depending on the size of your monitor okay so now that i have these settings in place i'm just going to add zero to the right and zero to the left now it's time to go to the filters and change our blending mode so so in order for us to blend these two images the one that really works well is the multiply so i'm going to come over here click this drop down and i'm going to select multiply and as soon as i've selected that now you can see that these images are now blending and that looks great now we have these two bars right here let's get rid of that so to do that i'm going to come over here to my spacing and then for my custom margin i'm going to set i'm going to set zero to the top and zero to the bottom now we can see that our sections are flash so pretty much this is how you add your blending mode and this is how you achieve this effect great okay so that's looking good let's go ahead now and move on to our third example so i'm going to click this plus button here click on a regular i'm going to close this for now and again as we did before i'm going to start off by adding my background gradient colors so i'm going to click this gear icon to get into the settings click on background and then i'm going to click the second tab so i'm going to start by adding my first color so i'm going to select it here paste my color and by the way as i mentioned before if you'd like to use the exact colors as we're using throughout this tutorial i would include the link to the post in the show notes below so you can get all these settings that we're using okay so next i'm going to select my second color and then i'm going to paste it now it's time to change our gradient so we're going to change it to 164 so i'm just going to drag this like that so as we did before i am going to remove my padding so i'm going to come over here to spacing so for padding top i'm going to add zero zero to the right bottom and left okay so pretty much we are ready now to add our row so i'm going to save this and then i'm going to click this plus button here add a single column and in that column we're going to have a text module so i'm going to select it so i'm going to paste my text in here like that and then i'm going to come over here to my design tab and make sure my text is centered by selecting my button here on the text orientation so for now i'm going to save because we need to do some customizations to 
our row. So I'm gonna come over here to my row settings, click on design, and as we did before, we're gonna make sure that this fills the whole width. So I'm gonna come over here to sizing, make this row full width, and then over here where it says use custom width, I'm gonna set this to percentage, and we're gonna go all the way to 100%. Now we would like some breathing space between our text or in our design. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add some padding to this row. So I'm gonna come over here to spacing and then I am going to add my custom padding of 200 to the top and 200 to the bottom. And as I mentioned before, you can actually increase this depending on the size of your monitor. So here I think I'll adjust this to about 300 like that. Okay, because this text is going to be enlarged very soon. And then over here to the right, I'm just gonna add a 60, and then 60 to the left, like that. So for us to achieve the effect that we need, we need to come over here to the blending mode. So I'm gonna click on filters, and then we're gonna change our blending mode to overlay, like that. Okay, so right now you can't really see the effect because the text is quite small but we are going to now work on our text module. So for now, I'm gonna save, and then I'm gonna come over here and click the gear icon, so we can start adjusting our text module. So here, I'm gonna to go to my design tab. Right, now because this is our heading two text, I'm gonna come over here to my heading text, select the second tab for heading two, and then we're gonna change the uh, default font to Nunito. We're gonna make sure that this is set to bold, and then we're going to increase the size to 16VW, like that. So right now it looks really massive, but the next step is to add the letter spacing so that these letters are going to be overlapping. So over here on my heading two letter spacing, we are going to add minus 0.2, but instead of pixels, this needs to be EM, like that. So now we can see that our text is all condensed, which is the effect that we are after. Next, we're gonna come over here to our heading to text color, and we are going to add our color, but this time our color is going to be transparent, so I'm just gonna drag this slider down a little bit so I can get my RGBA option here, and then I'm gonna paste my color with, between the brackets, like that. Now to add our animation, I'm gonna come over here to my advanced tab and add my CSS class. So I'm gonna paste it in here, and by the way, if you'd like to, um, follow along step by step with the settings that we are using now, I will leave a link in the comments box below so that you can uh, use these settings. Right, so I've added my CSS class. Now I'm gonna go ahead and save, and then to achieve the expanding animation, I'm going to add my CSS code to the page. So over here, I'm gonna come to, the, uh, to this gear icon here for the page settings, click advanced, and then I'm gonna come over here to custom CSS and paste the CSS code. So as you can see, it's now expanding, and this is how you make this animate. And like I said, this code is on the uh, blog post, which I'll link to in the show notes below. So now that we're done with this, I'm gonna go ahead now and save, and then I'm gonna publish this page and exit the Visual Builder. Okay, so let's take a look at our final design. So as I'm scrolling through, we can see all the effects. And finally, we have our expanding text. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching. See you soon.